Hello everybody. Recently I was discussing cryptocurrency with some of my friends who are also interested in the space when I brought up Cardano. They hadn't heard a lot about the project, and I started off by saying that it was a proof-of-stake smart contracts platform, and immediately my friends became a bit dismissive of the whole thing. Honestly, that is quite understandable as the space does seem to be saturated by many projects that offer a lot of the same things Cardano does. Smart contracts aren't new, staking isn't exclusive to Cardano, there are many projects focusing on interoperability, and most if not all at this point are focusing on scalability. So for this video, I'm going to be discussing why Cardano is significantly competitive in this market despite all of this. My friends made me realize that it's important for people to know what innovations Cardano is bringing to the table, but it is also equally as important to understand how Cardano is innovating. Personally, I believe the how, as opposed to the what, is what makes Cardano truly unique and causes it to stand out amongst the rest of the projects in this space. Design Principles and Quality Control Let's start off by looking at the principles that IOHK, the company developing the software behind Cardano, utilizes while engineering it. Everything that IOHK produces is put through a process known as peer review. For those that don't already know, peer review is the evaluation of scientific, academic, or professional work by others working in the same field. Basically, what this means for IOHK is doing research and writing papers, then handing off those papers to others within the same fields of academia who aren't affiliated with IOHK, and having them scrutinize and review the work they've done. This is a way for the company to assure the validity and effectiveness of the game theory, technicalities, and structure behind the Cardano protocol. They do all of this before they even begin to write code, and when they do write their code, they use something known as formal methods and formal verification to ensure that their code has the reliability and robustness that will be required of it to run a protocol where billions or perhaps in the future trillions of dollars worth of wealth will be at stake. This is something I believe people often overlook or undervalue when researching Cardano. Something that this project has that none of the others do is this academic, mathematical and scrutinous approach to quality control. Quality control is, in my own opinion, one of the most overlooked issues in the cryptocurrency space. It's a major issue because there are too many projects out there that are so consumed by the promise of profits that they rush to get a product to market. This rush leads to crappy code, and crappy code leads to problems with their protocol. Now if these companies were programming something like a website or a smartphone application, this would be understandable. But if blockchains do become a big part of our future, then people need to understand that people's wealth, identity, and information will be stored on these platforms. This means that there will be a lot at stake if one of these blockchain platforms fails, and if your platform was built from the beginning using crappy, rushed code, then there is a large margin for error there. Smart money, large corporations, and even governments of countries will immediately notice this when they start to research cryptocurrencies as an avenue to store and create wealth. Now, do you think they would trust their wealth to a protocol that was cobbled together by profit-seeking code monkeys in a few months? Or would they trust it to a protocol that was built by scientists, using the same methods of rigor and engineering that is used in the aerospace industry? Regardless of your views on the importance of quality control, it's clear that Cardano has no competition in this area. And I do mean no competition. There are no other projects I have found that care enough about quality control to consistently implement things like peer review and formal methods. Provably Secure Proof-of-Stake and True Decentralization Now, Proof-of-Stake isn't necessarily new to the cryptocurrency space, but Cardano's Proof-of-Stake is going to be bringing something new to the table. Part of the fruits of IOHK's insane quality control is the fact that Cardano will be utilizing the first ever Provably Secure Proof-of-Stake consensus algorithm. Provably Secure meaning that it has been mathematically proven to be secure showcasing a level of security that is on level with, or greater than, that of Bitcoin's proof-of-work algorithm, which has never once been compromised. Again, this only adds to the legitimacy of Cardano, and makes it seriously competitive when compared to other proof-of-stake projects. Cardano's proof-of-stake protocol is also a protocol that is designed to resist centralization of stake pools. Centralization of mining pools has long been an issue with protocols like Bitcoin, where at one point in its history only a few large parties, like Bitmain and a few others, maintained more than 51% of the hash rate of the network, something that could have had dire consequences to the network had these parties decided to collaborate with one another. 
Cardano gets around this by allowing smaller stake pools to remain competitive with larger ones by introducing diminishing returns to their stake pools. If you, for instance, were staking with a large stake pool, you would be given less staking rewards than if you were staking with a smaller stake pool. In this way, centralization of nodes becomes significantly more difficult as people are incentivized to move their stake to different nodes throughout time. When compared to other cryptocurrencies utilizing proof-of-stake, it is clear to me that Cardano intends to stick to Satoshi Nakamoto's dream of decentralization as closely as possible. The way that Cardano's consensus algorithm is designed, I believe, alludes to this. But Cardano is doing something else to ensure true decentralization that few other projects have attempted. Cardano is implementing a treasury model to ensure the sustainability of the project. Basically, a percentage of transaction fees are fed into what is known as a treasury, where they are then used to further develop or enhance the project. How this money is decided to be used is what adds another layer of decentralization to Cardano that most projects entirely lack. With Cardano, people are able to delegate their stake and vote for the future of the protocol. So in the future, if people are dissatisfied by the work being done on the project by developers, then people using the network will be able to vote these developers out of or into power to develop for Cardano, as well as pay them for their work with funds from the treasury. This eliminates one of the major points of centralization that most projects suffer from. A core development team that holds all of the power to develop for a project until the end of time is a massive point of failure in regards to decentralization. Cardano's third world approach. Finally, I'd like to mention the approach that Cardano is taking in third world countries. Both Emergo and IOHK have been reaching out to a lot of developing countries recently. This is something I think a lot of people often overlook the significance of, as most initial adoption of cryptocurrencies, I believe, will occur in these areas. This is mostly due to the fact that these countries are where blockchain technology will have the most immediate impact. Many people living in these countries are impoverished and unbanked. The reasons they are unbanked is mostly due to the cost of banking infrastructure being too great for them to manage. Blockchain infrastructure is significantly cheaper, on the other hand, as it pretty much only takes an internet connection and a smartphone to participate. Both of these are actually pretty obtainable by the average person living in these countries as well. Smartphones are very popular all across Africa, India, and other developing areas, ever since miniaturization and mass production of these devices grew to a point that it made them affordable and easily accessible, even to the poor. Banking these unbanked people will have serious implications for these regions. Mainly, it will help to fix the underlying issues that cause such great poverty in these areas in the first place. You see, many of the people living in the developing world live under corrupt or dysfunctional bureaucracies that are unable to maintain basic things like personal identity, land ownership, and many other necessities we take for granted here in the developed world. Through the use of smart contracts and the immutability of the blockchain, I believe it will be possible to bring these necessities to the developing world, which in turn will help improve the living conditions and quality of life in these areas. If this is true, then it is important to note that the processes involved in developing a country creates loads of wealth, and if blockchain helps these people achieve their wealth, then you can rest assured they will also be storing their wealth on the blockchain further contributing to the entire ecosystem while also helping transform the world into a better place for its inhabitants. The devs of Cardano have recognized all of this, and that's why we see their involvement in countries like Ethiopia, Rwanda, and India. Well, that's all I've got for today, everyone, but stay tuned because this isn't everything that makes Cardano relevant. I'm going to end up making this into a series of videos since there is just too much to cover in a single video. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to me speak. You could be doing anything else with your valuable time, but instead you chose to listen to my voice. And that does mean a lot to me. So of course, thank you for watching.